may lift your hands, you close your eyes and just worship God. Just worship God. Worship Him in your own language. Whether it's in Debele or it's Shona, just tell Him how much you love Him. Just adore the King of Kings, adore the Lord of Lords. The one who died for us. Just praise Him. Just focus on Jesus. Take this time to focus on Jesus. It's your moment. It's, a, it's an opportunity for you to fellowship with Jesus. With the King of Kings and with the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, praise and worship. We may take our seats, hallelujah. We may clap our hands as we take our seats in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, you want us to continue with praise and worship? We can continue. Hallelujah. We thank God for his presence. God is in this place. Say God is in this place. How many people believe that God is in this place? And then how many people know that God is in this place? Hallelujah. God is in this place. Hallelujah. Uh, I won't be long. I will just uh, summarize my sermon because we have heard the word from his servant, Minister Daniel. Hallelujah. We thank God for the message on repentance. We believe uh, we have been edified. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, before I waste any time, I would like to thank the servant of God, Dr. Ian Love, for granting me this opportunity to stand before you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We may clap hands as we celebrate him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the presence and to honor the woman of God, Dr. Evangelist in love, who is in this place. Hallelujah. We may do better. Hallelujah. We may clap our hands and celebrate. Hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah. Uh, my ministration uh, we may close our eyes as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time that you have given us uh, to listen to your word. We appreciate your presence. I ask, mighty King, as I share this word, that may you flow through these lips of clay in the name of Jesus. May you cause each and every heart to be edified by this word. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. The title of my sermon is Hearing, or rather, Discerning the Voice of God. Discerning the Voice of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, Discerning the Voice of God. How many people hear the voice of God? You may lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Let us go to the book of John, chapter 10, verse 27. John, chapter 10, verse 27. I will read from the NIV. The Bible says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Hallelujah. I will read it from the NKJV from the New King James Version. Uh, I think it's on the screen. It says my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So the sheep of God hear the voice of God. 
So I asked a question, how many people hear the voice of God? A few hands came up and some were not sure when they were raising their hands. Because they, we, they don't have confidence or because of other reasons. But how many people are the sheep of God? You can raise your hand. Everyone believes that they are a sheep of God. But when I say, do you hear his voice? Uh, the confidence level or the confidence index goes very low. Hallelujah. Most people, they don't have confidence that they hear the voice of God or that they know the voice of God. But Jesus says in John chapter number 10, verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice or my sheep know my voice and I know them and they follow me. Hallelujah. So if you are a sheep of God, you must know his voice. If you do, you must hear his voice and obey it. Actually, as a Christian, uh, this is my, my humble submission that most Christians, not most, all Christians, they hear the voice of God. Because the voice that brought you in this place is the voice of God. You have heard the voice of God bringing you into this place or telling you to pray, or telling you to come to such a sanctuary. It is the voice of God. Hallelujah. But now, people, they don't have confidence that they hear the voice. When someone asks you, uh, do you hear the voice of God? The person won't lift up their hand because they are afraid maybe you will, the person might continue and ask, what is God saying about my life? Because no one wants to be asked that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you must hear the voice of God because you, you are a sheep. And the reason why you, you hear the voice of God is so that he can lead you. Psalm chapter 33, the Bible, 23, the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads us into greener pastures. Wherever he leads us, we must fall. How does he lead you? Through his voice. And you must discern that voice. God has been speaking from Genesis chapter 1 to the book of Revelation. Genesis 1 verse 3, he said, let there be light. He is not like uh, uh, other gods, as the songs say. Some gods, they don't speak, but our God speaks. Hallelujah. Say, my God speaks. And I hear him. I want us to go to John, just, just uh, two chapters behind. John chapter 8, verse 47. Uh, you have to catch what I'm saying because it's going to be highly summarized. I'll be finishing shortly, but it's a very important message for most Christians. So that next time when someone says, do you hear God? You don't just lift your hand halfway. You, you lift both your hands and your feet at the same time. You lift everything. That is liftable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if you don't hear God, how can you claim you are, you are a Christian? What are you following if you are not hearing God? Who are you following? Praise the Lord. So let us go to verse 47 of John chapter 8. The Bible says, whoever belongs to God, hears what God says. Ah, it's in the Bible. Hallelujah. It says, whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I did not want to read the last chapter, but the last part. <laughs> but let me read it again. Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to the Almighty God. Hallelujah. But I believe, I believe you belong to God. We are, there was an altar call here from the servant of God, Minister Daniel. No one came. It was a sign that we all belong to God. Hallelujah. So it means we, must, we hear the voice of God. Say, I hear the voice of God. Say, I hear the voice of God. Let us go to Romans 8, verse 16. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Whoever belongs to God, hears the voice of God. Romans 8 verse 16 says, 
the Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. So the Holy Spirit is the one who speaks in our hearts to our spirits that we are what? God's children. How does He testify? He speaks. Hallelujah. He speaks. Say, He speaks. Uh, there are many verses that I can read to show you that God speaks. Uh, Job chapter 33, the last one. I'm just introducing my message so that you see that God speaks and that he speaks to you. Job chapter 33, verse 15. The Bible says, In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people, as they slumber in their beds, he may speak in their ears and terrify them with warnings to turn them from wrongdoing and keep them from pride. So this is another way which God speaks through dreams and visions. Uh, but it's not uh, the subject of our message. I'm just reading this verse to show you that God really speaks. Hallelujah. But why do... Why do most Christians not hear his voice? Why don't I hear his voice? Ask yourself, why don't I hear his voice? Hallelujah. Why don't you hear the voice of God? Most people, they don't hear the voice of God because other voices are more loud than his voice. There are other voices which are, what, which are speaking louder than the voice of God. Hallelujah. So there are certain hindrances. We are going to look at the hindrances to hearing or discerning the voice of God. Praise the Lord. The first one is because of the flesh the, or the sinful nature, which Minister Daniel was encouraging us to repent from. It's because of the voice of what? Of flesh. Because the, your flesh has a voice. And it is the, it is the most talkative voice in our lives as Christians. That is why we must deal with the flesh. That is the first part of call as Christians that you must deal with. To silence the voice of the flesh. Because when your flesh is making noise, it's hard for you to discern the, the, the voice of God. It will take someone who is killed, who has walked with God for a long time to hear and to be able to discern the voice of God. Uh, what is the flesh? Let us go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. You can put it up on the screen. I will read it from the screen. It says, For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want to do. So these are contrary natures or voices. The spirit will be speaking something else, and the flesh will be speaking something else. Hallelujah. The flesh will be speaking something else. Let us go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Verse 16 says, For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of the Lord lives forever. So we see three categories of the, of the sinful nature. It's called the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Hallelujah. I don't have time to go uh, and explain each and every one of them, but we'll just summarize them. Because these are the temptations that Satan went to Eve with. He attacked Eve with the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Let us go to Genesis chapter 3, to the fall of man. 
when the serpent, the serpent uh, visited Sister Eve in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says in chapter 3, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat, I want you to take note of verse 2, it says, we may eat from the trees in the garden, but God did say, say, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You see, she was conscious of the voice of God. Say she was conscious of the voice of God. Because she had the voice of God, God did not, did not need to repeat himself because he, she had given her the command. So the command was repeating in her heart. It was the voice of God in her heart that you must not eat this fruit. But let us see what the crafty serpent said. Verse 4, you will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat it, when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. Hallelujah. Your eyes will be opened. The last of the eyes. Your eyes will be opened. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. Then, yeah, take note of verse 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good, she used her eyes. It was the last of the eyes. The food was appetizing to the eyes. It was good for food and pleasing to the eye. And also desirable for gaining wisdom. Hallelujah. It was desirable. She, I don't know, she wanted to be bigger than what she was already was. It was the pride of life kicking in. She wanted to be, to be very wise. I don't know more wiser than who because it was only her and her husband. So it was a desire for her maybe to be wiser than God. It was actually the pride of life. And these temptations are the temptations that we, 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 fall, we fall on as Christians. These are the temptations that cause people not to discern the voice of God. When you are making your decisions, you are now being pushed by the pride of life. You want men maybe to recognize you. You want men to praise you. You want men to see you. And the decisions you take, they lead you into danger. Maybe you go into debt trying to impress people. You go and borrow money so that you you buy a very luxurious car. And then you are not able to repay the loan. And then you are crying and say, why God did you not tell me that I will not be able to repay this loan? But you were cluttered by the pride of life. The pride of life was the one leading you. And then the last of the eyes. This one, I, I don't need to explain it. Most men, they know it. They are more educated, some of them, than me in the last of the eyes. Some... Some relationships are started because of the last of the eyes. And then the pride of, and then the last of the flesh combined, the eyes and the flesh. What they see and what their flesh wants. And then it leads you. It can lead you to make decisions. And you won't be able to hear God. You can ask men, you ask them, how did you fall into this sin? How did you fall into this sin? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the, the, the power of the eyes will have taken over. The voice of God, you will wonder, ah, are you really a pastor? How did you fall into this? But the person will be hearing God. When, like myself, when I'm on the pulpit like this. But then you, <laughs> you wonder when the person is out, oh, where did the voice of God go? Hallelujah. Say, where did the voice of God go? the last of the eyes will have cluttered. It will have crowded and pushed out the voice of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. So you must deal with the, the sinful nature. If you deal with that, you don't need to go to a prayer closet. I know this will be controversial to some people, but you don't need to go to a co prayer closet, closet and say, God, I want to hear your voice. God, speak to me. It's unnecessary. God wants to speak to you more than you want him to speak to you. He actually wants to speak to you. 
But the problem is that when you come to his presence, there is clutter. Say clutter. There are many voices sending frequency to you. There will be many frequencies. And then the first frequency which comes is the voice of the sinful nature. And when you deal with the nature, with the sinful nature, uh, the Almighty God, you will clearly hear His voice. Hallelujah. So you must not leave. Let us put uh, Galatians 5.17 for the last time. As I move to the second point. You can put Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. As we move to the second point. It says, For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. Can you go to verse 18? But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Hallelujah. So the, the best way to overcome the sinful nature is to yield yourself to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You yield yourself to the voice of the Holy Spirit and you kill the desires of the flesh. Hallelujah. 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 And then the second voice, which is connected to the sinful nature, but it really uh, is not the sinful nature. It is the voice of your emotions. The voice of your emotions. The voice, emotions also clutter the voice of the Holy Spirit. It will be hard for you to discern the voice of God if you are easily led by your emotions. Our emotions cloud the voice of God. Uh, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 19. Let us go to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 19. The Bible says, This is what the Lord said to me. Go and stand at the gate of the people. No, it's verse 9, not 19. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond Q. Who can understand it? The heart is deceitful. That's where most of our emotions come from, from the heart. Some people, some Christians, the problem is that they are led by their emotions. If they feel good about something, it means God is good about it. If they feel bad about something, it means God is feeling bad about something. But your feelings, your emotions are not the voice of God. Say my emotions, my feelings are not the voice of God. One problem with the flesh is that sometimes it pretends to be spiritual. So it can give you signals that it is the Holy Spirit. It can give you certain signals. It has its own form of discernment which is not the discernment of the Holy Spirit. It's very deceptive, yes. It is very deceptive. The Bible says, uh, when it's listing sins in Galatians, they, it says there are sins, uh, there are evil suspicions. You know evil suspicions. When you are thinking evil about other, that, this, you are always suspecting evil about other people. That sin, is, it is the flesh trying to, to have discernment. It is the flesh trying to operate a gift of the Holy Spirit called discernment. But we must yield to the Holy Spirit and have proper discernment. Not evil suspicions, because that is what leads most Christians. They look at a person, and if the person is half handsome, they are not fully handsome, they start to suspect them. And if the person is 100% handsome, they, they believe. They say, ah, that one, my spirit is good. Instead of confessing that your flesh is actually seeing what it likes. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 And it is what, it is, what is leading most Christians. It, it can be like a joke, but most Christians, they are led by the, their emotions. 
how they feel. Hallelujah. If they feel bad, that is why most Christians don't pray, because sometimes you won't be feeling good. And most Christians, they have depression and stress. They say, they come and say, I think God is not with me. Please pray for me. God is not with me, because they feel like, they don't feel like the presence. They feel maybe when praise and worship is singing and there are goosebumps all over. When that feeling is not there, they say, ah, the Holy Spirit is not with me. I have sinned. Then they cry, they repent. Then they wait for the next dose of feeling, of good feeling to believe that God is with them. But you are being led by your emotions. And in that realm, it is easy for Satan to manipulate you. It is easy for Satan to toy around with your life. Hallelujah. That is how most Christians are manipulated by the devil. They feel bad one day and they say, ah, today I'm not going to church because of a feeling that they have. Ah, that church, I no longer understand it. And then when they are locked in online, they see, ah, it's fire, fire. Then they party, they come late to church. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just joking. I saw some people were too serious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But we must be careful and we must Today, I believe as I am preaching, you are receiving proper discernment for you to know the voice of God in your life. Because you must be led by the voice of God. The voice of God must not lead us when you are only in a sanctuary like this. Because when you are in a sanctuary, what can you do here? It must lead you out there when you are in the world and have influence. When you meet your neighbor one day, you start to prophesy because you know the voice of God. You just start to tell them that, ah, why, oh, why are you feeling pain in your stomach? <laughs> say, why are you feeling pain in your stomach? The person will be surprised and say, ah, how did you know? Pray for me. Where is your church? I'm coming. It's a very easy way of doing evangelism. When you are discerning the Holy Spirit, but when you are not discerning and you are listening to your feelings, when you wake up in the morning, you see your neighbor, you'll be saying, ah, this economy. Say this economy. <laughs> Say this economy. You will speak what you are feeling, what you are seeing. Evangelism becomes easy when you hear the voice of God, when you follow the voice of God. It will become a pattern when you have a clutter of your own emotions and your own desires. If you have the sinful nature, there is no evangelism to talk about. You'll be thinking of running away from God. You'll be thinking, angels are watching me and I'm sinning. This is hard. Hey, let me leave this church business. <clears throat> but God will help us. Hallelujah. Say, God will help me. As I conclude, because of time, uh, let us go to, I want to show us a scripture because I just mentioned a voice and there is no scripture that I read. I want us to read from Luke chapter 22, verse 42. And we see what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did. In verse 42, it says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. Hallelujah. You see, when Jesus Christ heard the voice of God, he wasn't feeling good. Hallelujah. Because most Christians, they believe that if they feel good, it's the voice of God. The voice of God can come and tell you something which is not good. To your, to your body, I mean. Which is not good to your body. Hallelujah. Which, is, which does not make you feel good. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say. Like what year the God wanted Jesus Christ to go to the cross. And it was painful, it was stressing to, to Jesus. That's why he said, Let Lord, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. He was begging the Father to take the cup away. The cup of suffering. Because you are seeing the suffering that he was about to go through. So he was begging the Father to take away the cup. But we must do like the Lord. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. 
So you must also say in your life, nevertheless, not my feelings, but your feelings, Lord. You must care about the feelings of the Lord, not your own feelings. Hallelujah. Then you begin to hear the voice of God. Not this thing of saying, I don't hear the voice of God. You will be bothering the servant of God, saying, uh, man of God, is that the, the, the husband for me? You bring a picture and these details and this height and this age, everything. And this payslip, you say, is he the one? The payslip has already communicated to your body that he, he's the one. And then you pretend like you are asking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then you start to bother him. Is he the one? Do you think God can speak when you have already made a decision by your own feelings? Hallelujah. Will you listen to God if he says, no, he's not the one. I've, I've prepared a short, plump one for you. Will you listen to the almighty God? <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, will I listen to God? Hallelujah. Then the third, the third voice is the voice of your mind, the voice of reason. How you, you, you reason, how you are trained. Maybe if you went to a private school, what did they taught you? It can be a hindrance to the Holy Spirit. If you, if you went to a public school, what they taught you, the thorax and the anthrax that they taught you, it can hinder the voice of God in your life. Hallelujah. But the mind must be renewed. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. As we are about to cross over to the prayer line. Say, speak to me, Lord. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. So there are patterns of this world. There are certain patterns. It is easy for you to conform to them. In this world, when the economy is not going well, people will complain. You speak about it. You tweet about it. You Facebook about it. It's the language of this world. Hallelujah. It's a pattern of this world. You, you bring up your own views. You do picketing. It's, it's, it's a pattern of this world. Hallelujah. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This will is his voice. You will be able to discern his voice. When your mind has been renewed by the, vo vo by the voice of God or by his word. And this is the Bible. So you must have the word of God in your heart. So that it washes away. It flashes some of the toxicity that is in the world. Some of the things that you learned from the world. Which... Do not align with the word of God. Because listening to the Holy Spirit does not require carnal reasoning. The Holy Spirit may give you something which doesn't make sense according to the standards of this world. For example, maybe if you are sick, the Holy Spirit may come. I'm not saying he always comes and says that. But when you are feeling sick, sick he may come and say, eh, don't pray, take Holy Communion. And then when you take Holy Communion, you are healed. But when you reason, you say, no, sickness and disease can only be healed by medication. This is what the world has put. It is only, me not that medication is evil, but that voice will override the supernatural, that you can drink medication and get healed, but you will have taken another route. Hallelujah. It will have cluttered the voice of God away. You won't have listened to it because of what you are taught or how your mind has been trained. That is why you need to train your mind anew with the word of God. We must train our minds. Say, I will train my mind by the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you must not live by logic, by how things move. Logic is the one that hinders a lot of people. They want things that make sense. If it doesn't make sense, they say it's not God. Hallelujah. But God, when we look at our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, He did a lot of things that did not make sense to the, to the carnal mind. 
if Jesus was here and there were sick people, what would he do? You will find him maybe spitting on the ground and smearing people with mud or speak, spitting on their tongues. And then making the person see, there's a person that he healed like that. Imagine if you were to do it in this age. Your logic will kick in and say, ah, they will say I'm a charlatan or something. It's because you have driven out the voice of God by your fear and by your mind, which likes logic. My last scripture, I promise, Matthew chapter 6. Today I want to copy the servant of God. I'll be reading a lot. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Say thank you, Jesus. That I will hear your voice clearly. I want you to know that God is willing to speak to you more than you are willing to listen to him. Hallelujah. Verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body. So worry occurs in the mind. And worry is one of the things that causes people not to discern the voice of God. Because the moment you are worried, you begin to draw decisions which do not come from God, that come from the revelation of God or from the spirit of God. When you are worried about these things which the Bible lists here, it says, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than these? So people get worried. Like right now in Zimbabwe, the economy uh, seems to be behaving in a certain way, and most people are becoming worried. You see, they become worried of their future. They become worried. But worry doesn't solve anything. The Bible says we must not be worried. In verse 33, it says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be given unto us. Hallelujah. So a worried person, it's very hard to reach them. It's very hard for the Holy Spirit to, to, to speak to them. The Holy Spirit may speak, but when you are worried, it will be very hard for you to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit. He is very gentle and he loves a, a, a quiet spirit, a spirit which is not worried, a calm spirit. Say a calm spirit. Hallelujah. Because when you are worried, your spirit will be like a person making noise and jumping and making a lot of noise. You won't be able to hear anything. But when you are not worried and you are trusting in God, your spirit becomes, becomes calm and you are able to discern his voice, what he is saying in your life. Say God is saying something in my life. Say God is saying something in my life. Hallelujah. Say God is speaking in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus, for speaking into my life. Yeah, since you are standing, there must be one scripture that I must read. Psalm 119. Hallelujah. Because I need to have a conclusion. Thank you, Jesus. The praise and worship may come as we are about to go to the prayer line. Hallelujah. Present worship may come to the stage as I read Psalm 119, verse 105. The Bible says, Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. So the word of God is a lamp unto your feet. So the word of God is like a voice, it will shine on your ways and become a light on your path. Hallelujah. So where you need to start is from the word of God. Hallelujah. Don't, don't start by, don't do like other people who just say, I'll, I'll be going into this. They go into the realms of the spirit. They just pray, pray without the word. And they come hearing strange voices. And they claim it's the voice of God. Hallelujah. That, that, that's a recipe for disaster. I jumped to some points, but there is also the, voice of, the voices of Satan and the evil spirits. Hallelujah. 
it will be for another time. But I'm saying this because you need the word of God. You start with the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When someone comes maybe and offends me, I don't need to go for 20 hours and praying and asking God, what do I do, God? I know from his word that I must forgive. The voice will be saying forgive. Hallelujah. Say the voice will be saying forgive. Hallelujah. That is how you, you hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. If you say now, uh, let me go to my prayer closet and you say back to send. You pray back to send, uh, die by fire, what, 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 what. Are you hearing the voice of God? Ask your neighbor, say, are you hearing the voice of God? There will be no voice to talk about today because you will be doing your own things which are not in the word of God. Hallelujah. No one must die by fire. They must be forgiven by fire. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, as we hand over to the praise and worship, the microphone is all right. Let us just lift up our hands, close our eyes as we pray. Ask God to help you with the message. I don't know how the message touched you, but ask God to help you discern his voice. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this message that you've given us. Ancient of days, we honor you. Holy Father, we praise you. We appreciate you. We thank you that you are willing to speak to us. You are willing to direct our lives. Your word says that we shall hear a voice from behind when we step to the left and when we step to the right, saying this is the way, walk in it. May each and every one of us begin to yield ourselves to your voice, Shh, to your voice, to your voice, to your leadership in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Holy Spirit, may you direct our lives. You are our shepherd. Direct us to abundance. Direct us to our place of abundance, to greener pastures. Direct us to our place of protection, our place of provision, our places of elevation, our places of promotion. Oh, we 